You just got in the car with Kardashian, went to LAX? I mean, we, we went to Nicole's house, but we, too much press was there. And we started driving. We were waiting for my kids. Well, let, let, me, let me go back to that. After you left your office, uh, you went in whose car? Bob's. What, what kind of car did he have? I don't recall. No idea? No. And you went directly from your office in Brentwood to Nicole's home on Bundy? Yes. What was your purpose in doing that? Mm, I just wanted to go to her house. Wanted to see what was going on there? No. I just wanted to go to her house. What did you want to do in Nicole's house? I don't know. How were you planning to enter the house? If somebody was there, I would have rung the doorbell up front. Or... And if no one was there? No, to left. Did you call first? No. Did you get to the house? We got to the front of it, yes. On Bundy? Actually, we were on Dorothy. Dorothy's around the corner? Yes, yeah, at the corner of Bundy and Dorothy. And what did you do there? There was a lot of media there, and Bob turned left and started down uh, Bundy. Past the condo? Yes. And then what? Well, he was just driving, and we were talking. Decided not to stop in? Yes. And then what did you decide to do then? I think we may have called to see how long it would take for the kids to get here. And and we were, Bob asked if I wanted to go straight to his house. I told him, no, just drive. And uh, Just drive? Yeah. Nowhere in particular? Yes. Um, and then we were... We were down Bundy at some area, and uh, I said, uh, well, I think I have some bags at the airport, or a bag at the airport, and we went to the airport. What what bags did you think you had at the airport? Golf club. How did you know it would still be there? I assumed it would be. How did you know that Kathy Randa hadn't made arrangements to get it back? I just assumed it would be there. Did you call Kathy first and say, by the way, did you make arrangements to pick up my club so I don't have to go down there and get them? No. Did you ask someone else to get them? No. Where were your children? Uh, en route from Laguna to Bob's house. Had they already left when you um, decided to go to the airport? I think they were about to leave. You called down there? I believe so, from, yes. From Bob's car phone? Or we called Bob's house and Bob said AC had just called one or the other. Uh, you, your children um, were with AC Callings? Yes. And who else? I assume the Brown family. What about Arnell? I don't think so, but could have been, but I don't think so. Who took your children to the Brown residence? AC. Did he go alone? With I was in Chicago, so I don't know. Did you find out later if he t took them down there alone? I'm not sure. He took them down there the evening of, uh, I guess it would be the wee hours of the morning of the 13th? I don't know. You know when the children got to the Brown residence? No. And you know whether anyone besides Callings was there with your children from um, Brentwood? Uh, in other words, did uh, any of your other family members go down uh, to be with the children? I don't know. When you say down, do you mean down to Laguna? Yes. I don't know. Did you talk to Callings about getting the kids back to you? Pardon me? Did you talk to Callings about getting the children back to you? I must have, yes. And this is now um, Tuesday morning, correct? Yes. Okay. Had you seen Al Callings yet? When you say this is now Tuesday morning, what are you talking about? I want to make sure the timing is right here. Um, but this, this is, is now Tuesday morning relative to what? When you're uh, driving around with Kardashian. Did I what? When you're driving around with Kardashian. What? what about it? What day is this? Tuesday. Tuesday. The 14th, correct? Yes. You got back into town on the 13th, right? Yes. Had you seen Callings yet? I don't recall. Had you spoken to him? I feel I must have. Did you call him from the hotel room? No. From the airplane? I don't believe so. And was he at your house on Monday night? I can't recall. Um, so Callings was going to take the children to um, to Bob's house? 
Yes. And they were going to be there in a, about an hour? Yes. Why did you want to just drive around? Because I just, that's what I do. You drive around a lot? Yes. No place in particular? Yes. How long have you been doing that? My whole adult life. Where do you like to drive around? It depends. What are your some What are some of your more favorite uh, places you like to go? I don't think there's any favorite place. I well, just like to get on a freeway and move normally or drive around. That's what I've always done when I've been troubled. Okay. So you, when you decided to um, go to LAX, you didn't know whether you were going to find your golf clubs here, right? True. And made no effort to find out, right? True. And when you got to the airport, um, what did you do? I think we went to uh, where luggage, uh, lost luggage, and then we went, uh, um, I believe they said, I don't know, we went to lost, lost luggage, and then we went to wherever the luggage was. Did you um, park the car? No, just at the curb. Did both of you go in? Yes. Um, did, did you make arrangements not get ticketed? I don't know how you can do that. So you just left the car there, right? Yes. American Airlines? I believe so, yes. Baggage pickup, right? Yes. Went inside and went where? I think to lost and found. What did you tell them? I was looking for a bag and I didn't have a ticket. What did, who did you talk to? I don't recall. Man or woman? I don't recall. What, what, uh, Caucasian, African American? I don't remember. <laughs> What did that person say? I don't know exactly. Obviously that the bag was to go to the other end of something. I don't, I don't, I don't remember specifically what, the, what they said. Now did you describe the bag you were looking for? I must have. What did you say? I'm looking for a golf bag. So that person sent you someplace else? Yes. Where? Um, to the other end of the baggage claim. And, and what did you do there? Um, some, uh, I saw the bag and uh, a guy opened the cage and gave me the bag. You just saw it through the cage? Yes. How did you tell, how did you prove to him that it was your bag? He didn't ask for any proof. Did he recognize you? I would assume so. What did you say to him? I don't remember. You know who that person is? No. Can you identify that person? No. Man or woman? I think that was a man. The bag was uh, in the blue cover bag, right? I don't know if there was a blue cover well, bag. Well, it was the cover bag, right? Yes. What did you do with the bag when you got it? Either Bob carried it or I carried it and put it in the trunk of his car. Did you look inside? No. Did you open it? No. Not once? No. Did you open to see if everything was in there? No. Why not? Because I wouldn't. I'm a trusting person, I guess. You didn't care to see if these were your favorite golf clubs, right? Yes. In fact, you want them back right now, don't you? Yes. Well, you don't have to answer that. Well, no. your, your lawyers ask for I want clubs. them back. These are your favorite golf clubs, right? Yes. And you didn't look inside? I've never got to an airport and looked to see if all my clubs were still in the bag ever in my life when I checked a golf club, golf it's, bag. It's the first time you in your life you've gone to an airport the day after you came into town with your luggage to get your golf clubs? Pardon me? It's the first time you, you made a special trip to the airport to get your golf clubs? No. When did that happen before? Many times before. Many times when you would come back into town with your luggage and your golf clubs not be with you? Correct. And you would go back and get them yourself? Correct. Why, why does that happen so often? Because I play so early in the morning, and most of the times, not only in L.A., but even when I've been out of L.A., uh, and I want my clubs because I'm going to play the next morning, and they evidently came in on the next flight, and I don't want to wait because I want to play first thing the next morning, so I get up early or later on that night would go get them because normally when they deliver, it's sometime the next day. And you don't uh, send a messenger? That has happened before, too, yes. I haven't sent them messengers, but they had delivered also. Or you, you might have someone go pick them up for you, right? No, I've never done that. Never asked Kathy? Never. Kathy's son works for you too, doesn't she? Now, yes. What's his name? Gary. Gary. Gary Randa? Yes. 
He was a member of your defense team, worked as an investigator or runner? Yes. Is he still? Uh, no. Has he worked for you? He has worked for me, yes. Currently? I don't believe so. I'm, I'm not paying him anyway. So you went down, you got the clubs, didn't look inside. Correct. And then um, drove where? Um, we may have driven around a little more, but essentially we went to his house. Where did you drive around? Between his house and the airport. Did anybody see you, by the way, when you read Bundy? I don't know. Did you slow down and yes. take a look? Yes, we're at the corner. We we're actually on Dorothy at the corner. Could you tell if anybody was home at Nicole's condo? No. Did you talk to anybody there? No. Were pictures taking of, taken of you there? I don't believe so. Have you ever seen any video or photographs of you there with Kardashian? No. When you got to the airport, got your clubs, got in the car, did you duck? How long did it take you before you got back to Kardashian's house? No, I don't. I don't know. Did you drive around a little more before you came back home? We didn't to rush Bob's straight house? to his house, but we we did we not rush straight. We didn't to rush his straight house. to his house because I don't think we got on the freeway, uh, but we went to his house. He he took a route home other than through the freeway. I believe so. Yes. He lives in Encino, right? Or at that time did? Mm, yes. Uh, where in Encino? Mm, Encino Hills. And do you know what uh, Rudy took back? Uh, maybe Sepulveda. I'm not sure. Okay. I'm not sure. I was not looking at it. Did you take the freeway down no. to the airport? No. Surface streets? Yes. Well, m mostly Barrington. Straight down? Yes. Most of the way, yes. Uh, when you got to Bob Kardashian's house, what happened to your golf clubs? I assume they stayed in the golf club at that time. In, in, did the uh, bag stay in Bob's trunk? At that time, yes. Did, when did you uh, take them out? I think he may have taken them out. I did take a club out at one point in time. When? Uh, sometime in the next two or three days. At Bob's house? Yeah. To just swing? Yeah. What club was it? I don't know. Well, when's the next time you saw your golf bag or your golf clubs after you put them in the trunk? In two or three days, sometime in those two or three days at Bob's house. Do you know if Bob took them out and brought them in the house? No, because they, the, they were in his garage. How do you know that? Because that's why I got the club out of the bag. So to your knowledge, someone took them out of Bob's trunk and put them in his garage, right? Well, his car was in his garage also. But the bag was out of the trunk in the garage? Yes, standing in his garage. You never uh, went to the golf bag to look into it for any reason? To get the club out, yes. When you went to get the club out, was the cover bag over the golf clubs? Yes. Did you had to unzip the cover bag? Yes. And did you take, it, take the whole golf bag out of the cover bag? No, the cover bag just fell. Just flipped over, right? Yeah. And you pulled out your club? Yeah. Did you look around at all for anything? No. Did you look at that other blue bag that was in there? No. Um, you swung your club in the garage there? No, I just kind of, it was like a security thing that I had with me. And then you put it back in the uh, golf bag? I'm not sure. Okay. And uh, how did the golf, did you take the golf bag with you um, when you left Kardashian's house? No. Do you, do you know what happened to it after you last saw it in the garage? No. Do you know whether Bob Kardashian or anyone else looked in your golf bag? No. Or your cover bag? No. Did you have them check it for anything? No. Do you know if they did? No. Do you know if there was any blood anywhere on your golf bag? No. On your golf clubs? No. On the cover bag? No. Did you check? Me? Yeah. No. Were there any knives in there? No. How do you know? Because I didn't put any knives in unless there were a pin knife for my keychain. Did you check? I didn't have to check. I know I never put any knives in there did other than maybe a pin knife for my keychain. Did you ask anyone to check? No. Okay. Um, when you got to uh, the LAX on the morning of the 13th, you said uh, Taft and Randa picked you up, right? Yes. And you put all, what car was uh, used to pick you up? Uh, I believe it was Skip's car. What kind of car is that? I don't know. Uh, when you got to Skip's car, you put the baggage where? 
Uh, I don't I don't know if he put the Louis Vuitton in the trunk or not, or in the back seat with Kathy. I just don't remember. It was just the three of you. Yes. Okay. And why did they pick you up? Because I don't know. Because Skip was my friend, and Kathy was my friend, and evidently, Arnell was distraught the last time I spoke to her. And they were the closest people to me in L.A. at that time. They see, from what I understand, was taking my kids to Laguna. When they got to the uh, airport and picked you up, uh, did you look in your bags at all before no. they went into the trunk? No. Did they? No. So they. And then where did you go from the airport? To Rockingham. Straight to Rockingham? Yes. And did you have conversation in the car about Nicole's death? I'm sure we did. Did you ask you know, how it happened? I may have. What did they say? No one knew. Did they know anything? Mm, I don't think so. Did they tell you anything at all about Nicole's death? I really don't recall. Did they ask you whether you did it? I don't believe so. There was no discussion about that? I don't believe so. And did Kathy Randa ever ask you that question? I don't recall. You don't recall? No. Did Kathy Randa ever ask you if you were responsible for Nicole's death? No, I don't recall. Wouldn't that be something you would recall, Mr. Simpson? That's argumentative. Can you search her memory? Tell me if she ever asked you that question. I don't recall. Is that the best you can do? Yes. Did you ever discuss with Kathy whether you were responsible for Nicole's death? I'm sure after I was arrested, I was telling everybody why they're doing this to me, yes. No, before you were arrested? I don't recall. What about Skip Taft? What do you mean? Well, that's did, did, you ever, did you ever tell him, let me ask you this, did he ever ask you if you were responsible for Nicole's death? You don't have to answer that. Not every conversation he has with Skip Taft is privileged. But you're going to have to prove it isn't. Okay, let me ask you a question. Uh, did you have uh, conversations with Skip Taft as a friend loyal friend of yours for many, many years when he picked you up at the airport? Or were you involved in attorney-client communications on that ride home? Oh, so sinister. Attorney-client relations on the ride home. Uh, don't answer that question. Well, that's, I have to have a foundation here, Mr. Well, Baker. You're not going to get any answers out of him about what he talked to Skip Taft about. Oh, is there something uh, about Skip Taft that, uh, you know, he's Im immune from a uh, subject of testimony? Well, I thought so in the criminal trial because he was an attorney. Uh, let, well, let me let law. me lay a little foundation on this, okay, Mr. Baker? Well, lay it what, quickly because I'm getting hungry. Okay. When, when you got in that car and drove home with Randa and uh, Taft, were you involved in attorney-client communications? Well, I don't. That with, calls with Taft. For, that calls for a conclusion on the part of this witness. Well, but it's the only way I can do it, Mr. Mr. Baker? No, I don't think you can do it at all. So, uh, well, how am I supposed to find out if it's privileged or if it's not privileged? They could have been talking about anything, well, including you golf clubs. You can certainly ask him if he was talking about the Super Bowl or the NBA Mr. Finals. Simpson, you know whether or not you were talking with Taft about legal matters, about lawyer-client matters, or whether you, whether you were consulting him for advice or not, legal advice, you know is that true? Well, let's, uh, don't answer that. I mean, that, that's... Anytime he talks to Mr. Taft about anything that has any legal implications, it, it's attorney client He didn't privilege. say it had any legal implications. These were his trusted friends picking him up in time of, uh, of great need and support. I understand that. Is that right, Mr. Simpson? Can you answer that? Is that I right? believe so, yes. Okay, so tell, tell us what you discussed. I don't know if we discussed anything. I think what they were trying to do is is be there to comfort me. Right. And did they ask you if you killed Nicole? I don't think they asked me any questions about killing Nicole, no. Did they question you at all about it? No. Did you tell them one way or the other that you did or didn't? I didn't even think that was a subject matter if I killed anyone at that time, so I don't believe that was a subject matter in anybody's mind at that time. So the subject of your responsibility or not for Nicole's death never came up with Taft and Rand, is that right? They were there to comfort me in that ride, yes. That's what they were there for. And you had spoken to them quite a bit before you got in that car, correct? Yes. On the plane? Yes. Lots of phone calls, right? I don't know 
what a lot of phone calls is, and Numerous. I don't know how many I got through on. Numerous phone calls, right? Um, I know I tried to get through to, to them and to people during that period of time. And also yes. from the hotel, right? Only, yes. yes. And during all those phone calls with Taft and Randa, from the moment you found out about the officers called you and told you about Nicole's death, mm -hmm. did they ask you whether you had done it? I don't believe so. Did you tell them? I never thought that that was a subject that anybody would ever discuss among us, no. Did I didn't tell them. I never, it never entered my mind. That, that never entered my mind. Did that sorry. subject ever come up during any of those conversations? At that time, no. Came up later, right? Obviously. With Rand and Taft, right? After I was arrested, yes. But not before? I can't recall. Not once. Is that what you're saying? I'm saying I can't recall. Now, when you got to... Um, where did you go, right from the airport to Rockingham on the 13th? Yes. Make any phone this is, calls? This is about the fourth time. Well, I'm just trying to get back to... Well... Well, I better not continue it because we're running out of tape and you're getting hungry, so we'll take our break here. <laughs> Which is more important? The tape. We'll get some hot food. you um, see this photograph that we've marked at Exhibit 71? Yes. You recognize that as the uh, bathroom at the O'Hare Plaza where you stayed on June 13 when you went there from L.A., right? Mm, yeah. Now, um, I just want you to p tell us where on the uh, vanity of this uh, sink the glass was situated when you apparently hit it with the back of your hand. You know, the broken glass. The, the glass that you said you broke. When it was broken. No, before it was broken, where was it situated? Okay, I thought, I don't know, I testified that I hit it with the back of my hand before it was broke. Well, how did you break it? I don't know. Well, what I'm trying to get to is where the glass was right before you came into contact with it that caused the glass to break. I don't know, but I can tell you when it was broken, it was right here beneath the towel. Right in this area, it was broken. Well, okay. Um, right take the, the uh, reporter's exhibit, Mr. Uh, oh, no, no. Take this one, Mr. Simpson. And why don't you um, uh, mark where, I guess, the, la the broken glass was? The red circle. The area. Now, in that uh, red circle was the broken glass? Yes. And can you tell us where the glass was when you came into contact and broke it. It must have been in this area because that's when it broke. This is where the glass kind of went. The circled area. Yeah, basically, yeah. Okay. And just a few minutes ago, you said you didn't backhand it. Do you? you I don't know how it broke. I really don't. I don't. I, I have no memory of how it broke. I just know I was in a frenzy and it broke. You do know that you broke it, though, right? Yes. Okay. And uh, were you on the phone when you broke it? Somebody may have been holding on the phone. I was going back and forth to the phone. It was during a period of time when I was trying to get a flight, and and in that period of time, I was uh, not put on hold, but people were looking for flight information and stuff. And I was I was just going back and forth from my from my from the phone to the. You so I don't know when in that whole mix. It happened, but it happened during that period of time. Nor do you remember how it happened, right? No. You do know, for example, that you didn't, like, throw it at the mirror, right? Yes. Or throw it in the air, right? Yes. Okay. Can I have, Peter, the uh, picture? No, the phone records. I didn't pick the last question. After, you do know, for that example, you, that you didn't throw it at the mirror, right? Answer yes. Question or? Or throw it anywhere. Thank you. Okay. Let me have the, the binder with the phone records. Mr. Baker, would you just describe for the record where Mr. Simpson was circled? Records. It looks to uh, like to the right of the uh, sink bowl, and it looks to the left of what appears to be kind of a wicker basket where there is uh, held some, I assume, the complimentary toiletries that are obligatory now in every hotel.
I don't have copies of this right now. You know what? Steve did make copies because I marked it last night, so they're here oh. someplace. And these are the Howard Johnson uh, cake. Yeah, can you give me some uh, copies in? Yeah. Yeah, let's mark this as Exhibit 72. This is my copy here, Shores. without the glasses? Mm, yeah. yeah. I've marked as Exhibit 72 a copy of a phone uh, bill for the day of June 13, 1994 at the O'Hare Plaza, Howard Johnson O'Hare Plaza Hotel. Now, that's where you stayed, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> by looking at these phone records, can you tell um, Tell me um, who you called that that uh, morning in the hotel room. Mm. The first number at the top is Kathy Randis. Mm. Kathy was the first person you called, correct? Yes. And did you call Kathy before or after you heard from the officer? After. Okay. What um, the very first phone call that you had that morning was with the officer? Yes. And you're sure of that now? Yes. Okay. No, I've always been sure of that. Um, has that ever been questioned before? No. Okay. And why are you sure of it? Because that was a call that woke me up. You were in a sound, sound asleep? Yes. What did you set your alarm for? I didn't. Did you have a wake-up call? I don't recall. How, how are you planning to get up after a red eye for a 10.30 golf? I never have any problem waking up. So you don't recall if you set the alarm or anything no. like that? Actually, I was wrong. I did have a call before this call, before the police officer. Who? The operator at the hotel. What'd you call about? See if my room was all right. When you first got up there? Yes. Before you went to sleep? Yes. Uh, when you got to the room um, and you unpacked, you went into bed, uh, did you fall asleep pretty soon? Yes. Okay. Um, did you um, have any Band-Aid or anything on your finger? No. Did you bleed at all in the bed? No. Did you drop any blood droplets on the sheets? No. You're aware there are blood droplets found on those sheets, right? Yes. And you're aware they're in the middle of the sheets, on the bottom sheet and the top sheet, right? No. You're not aware of that? No. You're, you're not aware of the fact that they were found generally in the middle where your hand might lie at night? No. Where are they? Where are my hands? No, where was the blood found on the sheets? I don't know. Someone just said there was some blood in the bed. No one ever told you where the location of that blood? No. Okay. Do you know how the blood got there? I assume in the morning when I was going back and forth. And when I say it, sat on the bed, I, you know. Do you know for a fact that's how it got there? I would assume so, yes. Well, when you say assume so, I, I don't know how you use the word assume. Uh, what I want to know is if you remember actually dropping the blood on the sheets in the bed in Chicago? No. And when you left that hotel that morning, did you know there was blood on the sheets in that bed? No. The first time you learned about that was in the court case? Yes. Um, okay, tell me uh, about the first call you got from uh, after you woke up. The police call. Excuse me? The first call that occurred that morning was one that you received? Yes. And wh who was it? I guess it was the operator from the hotel or the girl at the desk. That was right when you got in the room, right? Yes. But after you went to sleep, you got another call, right? Yes. And who was that? A police officer. Okay. And tell me about that call. What do you mean, tell him about it? Uh, tell me what you can recall from that call. They asked who I was. He, um, I don't know if he prefaced it 
He said, my kids are all right. First, let me tell you, your kids are all right. And I think he said he had bad news from me or words to that effect. And he said, your wife was murdered, he may have said killed, last night. Or your wife was killed, he may not have said last night. But your wife was murdered or your wife was killed, has been killed. And uh, I got up, sat up, and I tried to make sense of it. And I asked him what, you know, essentially what did he mean? I didn't, I didn't get it. It was just as hard to digest. And he started telling me that there was nothing he could tell me. We're trying to find out. And he gave me a whole line of they didn't know anything. We're trying to find out OJ. And he kept assuring me that my kids were OK. My kids were fine. I, I believe he said they were at the police station. And uh, I, may, I might have asked him why. Why they were at the police station? Yeah. What did he say? I, I don't remember what, that, what, what, what his answer to that was. Uh, and then he asked me about could I come back to L.A., I believe. And essentially it was that. What, what was the name of the person who called you? I, I don't, in court it, they said it was Phillips, but at the time I wouldn't have known what, which one it was. Can you remember anything else said by either you or him in that conversation? I don't know if he asked me then, uh, or was it the next call that did I, what time I left LA maybe? Or was I coming back, or when I was coming back? I, I don't remember then, I was kind of, I was not quite with it then. Can you remember anything else that either you said or he said? Mm, not right now, no. Do you know of any uh, document or anything else that would refresh your recollection about that conversation? No. Uh, how did you leave it with the officer? Did they uh, coming back or what? No, he said something to me about the press didn't know. I, I think he said, uh, it, and I, I, may, I think I asked if the Browns knew. And he said that they hadn't been told, or the conversation sort of like that, but they hadn't told anybody yet. And uh, I, um, you know, he may have given me a phone number. I think he gave me a, 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 a phone number or two. And um, that's all I can recall. Is that it? Yeah, that's all I can recall right now. What did you do after that call? I started getting dressed. I may have called Kathy immediately to, to, to get me a flight out, the first flight she can get out of, of Chicago. And I just, I started getting dressed and, uh, and I started calling airlines myself too. You asked Kathy to find you um, uh, a flight back? Yeah. Did you tell her what had just been told? No, not that time. I may have told her the next call. I may have told her. Did Did she know anything about it when you had called her the first time? Mm, no, she didn't know there was a murder. No. Did I don't she know anything so. had happened to? Uh, I think she w thought something had happened. I think I I don't recall, but I I'm pretty sure she knew something had happened, but I, I don't recall. <laughs> You're saying that when you called Kathy Randa, you didn't tell her what the officer had just told you? No, I didn't. He told me not to say it. He said, the press doesn't know. We haven't told anybody. They hadn't told the Browns. And I didn't want to tell her immediately, no. What did Randa say to you to lead you to believe that she knew? She asked what was going on. And I, I, I think they had just called her. Uh, someone had just called her. So mm -hmm. she was. You know, at that time in the morning, I guess she was concerned for me to call her that early. Yeah, who had just called her? I don't know at the time. Now I know it was the, the police or Arnell and the police.
You know now that the police had gotten in touch with Randa before you and Randa spoke, right? No, I do, yes. And uh, was did the police or Arnell first get in touch with Randa? I don't know. You don't know which one? No. But when you spoke to Randa in this first conversation, did she acknowledge that she heard about Nicole's death? No. What did she say to you about what she had earlier heard about Nothing. From the I was in I was in a rush. I just said, get me a number, Kathy. I can't talk to you. Get me the first flight out of here. And And she was trying to ask me what was wrong, what was wrong. And I told her I couldn't tell her. I was, I don't know, I may have been crying. But she knew what was wrong, right? I don't know. And, and uh, what did you, you got off the phone and then what did you do? I started trying to get dressed. And um, I started going back and forth to the phone. I started myself trying to see if I can get some numbers of uh, airlines, I believe. And did you? At some point I did, yes. But you had already told Randa to get the first flight out for you, right? Yes. I mm -hmm. said, see if you can get a flight out for me right away. But even though you told her that, you decided to do it yourself? Yeah, at the same time, I just wanted to get out of Chicago. And I'm glad I did because the flight she eventually got me was a lot, was later than the one I ended up getting myself. Now, uh, you had the numbers of the airlines? No. How'd you get them? Either from the operator or I'm sure from the operator at the hotel or I call information. Okay. And is that the next call you made? I don't know what these other numbers are. Okay. What, air, what airlines did you go back on? I think American. Okay. So you called a couple of airlines to get flights out, right? I, t I talked to a lot of people. It may have been some Hertz people I talked to. It may have been uh, some airline people I talked to. I don't even know if there were travel agents. Uh, I was just I was just on the phone, okay. back and forth on the phone. To I would get one person and say it was an emergency, and then they would maybe one of the airlines check the other airlines. I, I don't I don't recall. When you, when you made the calls to the airlines, did you succeed in getting an early flight? Yes. Okay. And then did you call Kathy back? I don't think I had got the flight by the time I talked to Kathy again. Okay, so you but see the fourth have. call on Exhibit 72 is a call back to Randa, right? Yeah. And um, what, what did you discuss in that call? Probably the flights. Did you discuss what had happened in that call? I may have told her then, yes. And did she ask you any questions? No. Did she ask you uh, about your activities the night before? No. <clears throat> Can you recall anything else you discussed with Randa in that conversation? No. Okay. And then um, what did you do next? I continued to try to get dressed, and I believe I continued to go back and forth to the telephone. And who, who else did you call? Just trying to get flights, basically trying to find the Hertz guy to come and get me. And uh, you called him, right? Yeah. Is that the next number? I don't know. I don't recognize any of those numbers. The 708, 708 number? I don't know. Okay. But you did get in touch with him and told him to come, and that's when you said you were rude, right? Yeah, that. I think I talked to him more than once, so I know I was rude whenever I spoke to him. Why did you, why'd you talk to him two times that morning? Because he wasn't there, and I was trying to get him to get there and trying to figure out how far he was away, those kind of things. The first time you called the, the Merrill of Hertz, he was not at his house? No, he was there. And then why did you call Merrill of Hertz again? To find out where he was. Was he close? You mean you called him at his house? I don't know. When you called him the second time, uh, did you reach reach him? I can't recall. I think I may have. Okay. And who else did you call? I called Nicole's house, I believe. Which number is that on here? 8260403. And who who answered? I believe I spoke to a police officer. Who was that? I don't know. Well, tell me what was said in that call. That may have been when they when I was first asked what time I had left the night before and was I coming back uh, uh, to L.A. soon. What did you tell him in, re in answer to the question? What I'm, I'm taking the first flight I can get back and what time I left the night before. Did they ask you any other questions? Not that I recall right now. Do you remember the name of the officer? No. Did you ask uh, what had happened to Nicole? 
everyone that I spoke to, I asked that, and they all kept saying they didn't know they were investigating, and there was nothing they can tell me. Can you remember anything else about that call? No. Did you ever write any of uh, any notes down of any of these calls? I may have wrote the number down, yeah. Where? Whatever piece of paper I had there in front of me. The police department number? The number that they had given me. I thought they had given me a cell number or something. The I first time you talked? Yeah, I believe he gave me a cell number or something. Have you ever made any notes or memos of these conversations that you had? No. <clears throat> and you, you don't know of any such notes or memos, right? No. Now, um, did you also call the uh, police department in West L.A.? I don't think so. If one of these numbers is to the West L.A. Police Department. Well, that would have been a number that they had given me. And what was the purpose of that call? To find out more about what was going on. And did you, did you find anything out? No. Okay. And... Okay, that's that. That's that. Now there's a third call here to to Merrill of Hertz. His number I'll represent to you is 708-377-4150. You see there are three entries, mm -hmm. three 708 numbers like that. Mm -hmm. well, why'd you call him the third time? To find out where he was. And when you got him the sec when you called the second time, was he still at his house? I don't remember. Was and when you called him the third time, was he still at his house? I don't know if I got through to him, but I don't recall. Why were you so anxious to get Merrill of Hertz when you could have gotten any ride downstairs? Well, I hadn't been downstairs yet, and it, as it turned out, there was no any ride downstairs waiting for me. 